Hello and welcome back to VHS Era. Now, you're probably wondering, why am I doing the last ever movie to be on VHS so early in the show's run? Well, this show came out at an interesting time because... As you're probably aware, there's a lot going on in the entertainment industry now, especially with streaming. S studios have definitely taken precedence uh, with streaming over physical media. And as a result, one reason, amongst many, of course, that the strikes, both the WGA and SAG strike started, was because due to uh, due to the uh, prevalence in streaming, at both actors and writers were a little worried about how they were going to get paid with this new model now. I'm not simplifying it to just that there's so many reasons the strikes happened, but that's just one reason amongst many. And it's hard to believe that VHSs weren't phased out that long ago. This, this movie came out, uh, History of Violence, came out on VHS back in 2006. So that is only a 17 year gap between VHSs being completely really uh, completely replaced by DVD and then Blu-ray. And then now as many people worry, DVDs and Blu-rays themselves are getting replaced with streaming and we're not quite sure where to go from there. But to give our thoughts on the matter, we have a special guest. She is an actress. She is a producer. She is a casting director and she is a journalist. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Jury Love. So, Jury, what do you think about this shift from physical media to streaming and how it's affecting the industry? Yes, thank you so much. So, before I got on, I just saw a post that the SAG after a uh, strike is over a couple mm -hmm. hours ago. Um, so I think it's very interesting. Um, so I've been on both end of spectrum of before streaming service and um, after the streaming service, after the COVID and stuff. And what I can tell you um completely brutally honest with you is the amount of residuals is so bad for streaming service from the streaming service versus the physical version of the movie or tv and i think they made a huge mistakes um overlooking at say netflix not being transparent of how many views and where and it is just so frustrating and all of my actors friends are devastated of the visuals because it's not depending on how many times it played but it depends on how many days it we worked on the set even if your principal role for the streaming service but it wasn't like that at all before it was based on how many views. So that was really bad. And then the AI thing, obviously. Like, I remember going to this futuristic um, 
you know, trailer and then they were scanning 360 degrees of my body and then I didn't know why. They didn't really explain. And I didn't know that, you know, they were trying to multiply us. And I had no idea. Um, so I think a lot of times um, when you see like older movie, when you see principal actor that's focused, but then the background actors, like you can you can see it's actually a human being, right? But then like the recent movies, like if you take a screenshot, you can see me here, <laughs> you can see me there. And I, it's just like very interesting. So digitally, it's definitely advanced and there's so much uh, special effects. And then, you know, visually, I think it's looking really good fast pace and interesting but um i think the old vhs and then old style movies has its own um kind of authenticity genuine movie making that if there's 50 people there's 50 people <laughs> it's not 50 people but they're gonna be like 300 of us all of a sudden or 10,000 of us yeah though i will say um that uh you know cgi in crowds is actually nothing new um i remember actually seeing a special feature for the adam sandler version of the longest yard and that was like you know back around mid 2000s like 2005 2006 and they actually did um like cgi half the crowd and they actually showed like a like how they did that so like when it comes to like movies where all the extras are like real people you have to go even further back than like you know the 2000s but it does but yeah ai is definitely making that practice even more prevalent more convenient for the studios and some might say worse for every for worse for the actors especially the background actors but now i want to ask a jury have you ever heard of a history of violence before doing this show no you know what it's weird <laughs> i'm I'm someone who, like, I can't say I can name every movie off the top of my head, but, like, if you showed me a poster or showed me a picture, right, of some random movie that came out any time, <laughs> I was aware of what movies were. I could point out and say, oh, yeah, I remember when that was first coming out. Like, and literally I looked at what else was playing in theaters and I was thinking, oh, yeah, I remember seeing the ads for this. I remember seeing the posters for this, blah, blah, blah. And even I didn't recognize this movie before finding out it was like the last movie ever on VHS. And, you know, it's kind of surprising and also sad because, you know, it has a great cast. It has Viggo Mortensen, Ed Harris is in it, as is William Hurt. And it's directed by David Cronenberg. It's surprising that even I didn't recognize this movie despite the pedigree, despite coming out like when I was a teenager. <laughs> um, and... Even if I don't recognize it, it'll be interesting to see what the opening to the last ever officially released VHS was. Get down on the ground. Go, go, come on, come on, move, move, move. Ah! The guy was a cop. Joey, get rid of it. I try to live an ordinary life. But I run with a very dangerous crew. And it's my job to clean up the messes they make. No questions asked. It was all working out for me. Go wash up. Those hands are scary. The way I figured it, 
What my family doesn't know won't hurt them. Until that night. Get down! You okay? The night someone took that gun. You took the ride down. I'm gonna find that gun. Because I got the toughest mob in the world. I'm the law. It's not just any hot piece. Tommy used it to burn a dirty cop. If they find it, I'm dead. Calm down. You can get to it before the cops do. You got something that belongs to me. Snub no sturdy. Yeah, you just scored in a card game. Royal Flush put her in my pocket. 300 cold puts her in mine. The gun is on the street. The Russian mob is involved. This whole thing is about to blow up. I did not marry an evil man. And I know that's not what I see when I look in your eyes. I want my son! <laughs> Tell no tales. You got wackers? How long have we known each other? Come on! I have never seen evil before tonight. Real evil. Give me shit. Don't you do this, Frankie! Don't you do it! Okay, I gotta be honest. That movie doesn't look great. The editing, I think they're trying to make it seem really cool and fast-paced and stylish, but it just really comes off as obnoxious, and the plot seems very generic. Um, just a guy with a with a past. He was a criminal, and now, but he tried to have a new life, and now his past is catching up with him. Which surprisingly is actually also the plot of a history of violence. But a history of violence is more of a slow burn family drama about basically uh, dealing with the fact that, you know, the like someone who you thought was this nice normal person isn't what you what you thought they were. And this looks more like the kind of movie someone would think that premise would be. Um, but what did you think, Jury, of that trailer? Well, what year was this produced? Um, 2005. Yeah, I I kind of liked it. And then oh. I kind of liked the cinematographies. And then um, mm -hmm. some of the wide shots, I thought it was really clever and then i thought like the choices are pretty good but again like we are now 2023 and then you know everything has completely changed one thing i really noticed is maybe like the high definition of the camera quality that we have now versus back then I know it's VHS transfer to YouTube, but but like say the level of crisp, like you know the skin tones and then the lighting and then everything that we can capture these days are so advanced. And then like that's one thing that I noticed. And then it looks really good vibe. It has really good vibe. I thought like overall, um, and I really thought. Um, the trailer looked um well really intriguing and then uh i like the home scene um mm -hmm. and i looked at some of the shots obviously this is a trailer so you know bits of here and there uh but i i liked it i kind of okay want, yeah i'm interested in listen up everybody Mr. Delane here is running your detention, and you will do whatever Mr. Delane says. So what kind of teacher are you? I teach uh, ballroom dancing. <laughs> no freaking way. Oh, so nobody told you we were the school rejects? Mr. Delane just getting his flirt on. 
this to this. Come on. No, I don't mean to brag on my He thought teaching them Damn. would make a difference. Positions, please. Quick, quick. Slow. Mm. Hey. Mm. They thought breaking him would be easy. I hope you understand what you're doing, Pierre. These are the kids that need the most help of all, and you're with them doing the cha-cha. What are you doing to help them, Mr. Temple? Look, we don't need your charity or anything. Everyone expects nothing from you. What I have taught you has value. Not where I live. You can get whatever you want. No, only some people get what they want. And those are the people who show up to get it. Now, when his skill meets their passion, a new style is born. What is the name of the move you just did? I ain't got no name. What you're looking at is history in the making. Your music with her. My music. Check this out. Punk moves like that won't get you no play around here. Trust me, I've tried it. Oh, I got plenty of play. So it's interesting. It looks like a very different movie from Running Scared, the movie that was beforehand. But both trailers have very like quick cut, fast paced editing. So it's kind of funny how. They're like two different types of movies, yet they're being promoted in somewhat similar ways. And also watching that trailer uh, made me realize that they don't really have trailer narrators anymore. Like, I don't know why, but they just kind of got rid of that. Those like in a world type guys. I will also say, you know, I... I've never seen this movie. I do remember it coming out. And I do remember Dante Bosco, the um, guy with very short hair. I remember like he was a child star all the way back in the nineties. He was in hook. And like, I remember when it came out, when I was an actual teenager finding it funny, cause he was like 30 and he was still playing teenagers so honestly um trailer itself looks okay um but i just found it funny that both movies are edit have trailers edited in similar ways but jury uh, what did you think of that trailer well, I really like the concept because I worked uh, with juvenile offenders for 12 years um, as a president and founder, and we taught music and production. And then I had similar resistance to uh, not only from the students, but um, from the staffs. Uh, why are you even here? Like, you know, it kind of like... Rem- uh, reminded me of the moment that I when I started the program and then after the fact that people start to see the result then people like start to kind of worship me but then um I remember the stigma and I remember like uh what is this Japanese woman doing here in the detention program or you know a risk program cause obviously I have an accent and then it's interesting to see this trailer I've never watched the movie, but um, it's intriguing because obviously it really depicts very well of, you know, kind of like you can kind of, you can see what's going to happen at the end, that these troubled kids uh, will be exposed to a completely different, you know, you know, kind of a outlet. And then by taught by somebody from not this country with this thick accent, but a completely different, um, you know, skill set. And I like that, um, you know, they're giving it to you. So it's almost like, you know, these black kids are kind of like slap in the face of the white people saying that, oh, hey, you have all these white privileges that you don't have to work hard to get that. But then he says, like, oh, you just have to keep showing up. And then I truly believe in that. 
So um, I thought they chose really good punchlines uh, for the trailers. And then I thought the choices are really good. Yeah, um, I will say that like you, I have taught in a cla- like taught drama classes and I have at least agreed that um, there has been a lot of sort of resistance from the students. Uh, it, it really depends though, I would say on what type of class uh, because I taught like a high school uh, program back in the mid 2010s and that's where a lot of the resistance seemed to come from. But I also taught an after school program um, this year and there seemed to be, and the students were a lot more engaged. And I do think there's also something to be said for like the environment. It seems like with after school programs, uh, there's a lot more students who actually legitimately want to be there, uh, are engaged and want, and therefore there's less resistance, but with like drama classes, like there's a lot of students want to be there, but there's also a lot of students who are taking it because it's like an elective and don't take it as seriously and are more likely to, as you say, resist. Uh, Would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, It's, it's very interesting that, you know, if that guy, the, you know, ballroom teacher was black, it's going to be, it it would be completely different movie. And if it was like a white teacher who is American, that would be a different movie. So it's kind of interesting choice. uh, The writer's perspective, you know, how can this immigrant basically get through to this high risk um, minority kids. And that's kind of, you know, the concept of it, right? And sometimes um, we overlook this racial profiling and like, no, not only just one side of it, but then, you know, we have this thing called comprehensive dissonance that we try to put people in the categories, hey, that Asian person, blah, 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 that, you know, white person, blah, blah, blah. So it's very interesting um, that um, the concept is very, I thought it was very intriguing and unique. And I can see the end that this uh, teacher who were not accepted at the beginning, uh, at the end will be accepted and then become like a superhero in the community. Yeah, I will say that is kind of an interesting twist. Like, <clears throat> A lot of these um, movies about a teacher coming in and getting his students to, you know, be to work harder and, you know, do well in school. Like it is actually usually like a white teacher and a mostly minority classroom. I think the only other like, for example, Dangerous Minds and the Jim Belushi movie, uh, The Principal. The only other exception I can think of is Lean On Me um, with Edward James Olmos. Uh, But it is rare, although there's one movie I would recommend. It's called Critical Thinking. Uh, It's directed by and stars John Leguizamo. And it is sort of a typical the typical like the story of a teacher coming in and inspiring their students but it's um actually about the chess team and how they were like the first inner city team to win the u.s national chess champ chess yeah championship um so like if you're interested in that type of story but with more with um more uh, people of color leads in them i would check that movie out it's on netflix you're a bounty hunter yes i am 
a dangerous profession. I got an armored truck that's empty. Where's the money? Her job was to get the money. Track down these thieves. Apparently they call themselves the first ladies. Her problem job. was getting out alive. Put your weapon down! Evacuate the van! Come on! Where's my money? Rated R. So, uh, I gotta be honest, um, I have heard that movie um, didn't receive, like, uh, Domino. That's another movie I'm like, oh, yeah, I actually think I saw a trailer for that in theaters. Again, never saw the movie. Um, but <clears throat> what's interesting is I remember from the other trailer that I did see in theaters is that uh, Domino Harvey started off as a model and became a bounty hunter. And this trailer just makes it look like she's like some sort of super assassin or super or some sort of action hero. Like you don't really get any sense of the, of her becoming a model or of her going from a model to a bounty hunter. So I thought that was kind of interesting uh, that they would hide that fact in that trailer. And it was also a little short. Um, but it, but I think um, unlike the first trailer, it did have some cool editing effects and it did kind of help sell the, we- sell the movie well as possibly a fun action movie. What did you think of that trailer, Jury? Oh, I agree with you. It was super short. I think probably the shortest trailer I've ever watched. And it's uh, interesting, but it was like really fast paced. Was that Kira Knightley? Yeah. Oh my gosh, she looked great. I like that short hair and mm-hmm. then different color hair color. I just saw her um, new movie, um, Boston Strangler, um, mm-hmm. with the director, and it was um, screening, and it was really interesting. And how these actresses can disguise themselves in like completely different hair and makeup, and then characters and stuff. Um, so that was really exciting to see Kira Knightley do this badass move, and you know, short hair um blonde um like very different so i i appreciated that but again like it was like a really super short um trailer i i guess um it's interesting that you started to mention about they used to have this voiceover about you know Mm -hmm. what the movie was but nowadays we don't have that kind of voiceover i think it kind of like cuts off the engagement of the audience it's almost like a third person view versus you know getting in the character and then being captivated so maybe that's why they stopped i have no idea but um this particular trailer um it looks interesting um but again it was like super short and then like by the time i kind of um action 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 like i didn't feel like it has um some of you know convincing storyline of what to expect unlike the second one that we watched like we could kind of see like you know the concept from you know beginning middle and end but this one just like i couldn't even like comprehend what's gonna happen and stuff so that was kind of interesting yeah and again like it's an interesting like life going from a model to a bounty hunter like why not highlight that in the trailer? <laughs> the Houston Rockets select Yao Ming. Being asked to carry the hopes of a nation of a billion people. He might be a good player one day, but he ain't ready. You want some of Shaq for the bubble? Oh, you went alive and stop that man. When everybody's criticizing you, it's got to give you a little fire. Yao Ming. Yao Ming combines the best of the East and the West. He has a chance to be great. year of the yow look for it on dvd again another super short trailer um i don't know if you like documentaries 
if you like basketball, you might like this. Um, honestly, I can sit through a basketball game, but it's not like my favorite sport. I remember Yao, like the height of Yao Ming's popularity, but I can say pay too, too much attention to him, but it looks like a fine documentary. What did you think, Jury? Oh, I thought it was good trailer. Again, it was short. Like maybe um, if it's true documentary of him, uh, even in the trailer, if I was the producer or editor, I would maybe put a little bit of his uh, the B-roll from childhood. You know, him playing the basketball when he was a kid. Maybe he was like a giant kid since the baby or something. I, th I, I think um, it wasn't like really clear cut, like, you know, oh, like, because he was like so tall and then like Asian and then looked different that he became kind of significant figure. I mean, he opened the door for a lot of Asian athlete, like in, especially in BA. I have no idea, but um, I, I felt like the concept of the documentary um, was a little bit weak in terms of the message that they want to, you know, promote. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, what kind of message do you think they were trying to promote? And like, why do you think the execution was weak? I just didn't understand, like, if Yami was like, became a figure of the Asian culture? Um, or did he not? Or did he have any struggles and then prejudice? And then, um, I think if I was a producer, like the trailer at the beginning, maybe I would have stated something like, you know, five times world champion or like, you know, five time MVP or something, you know, some kind of like a credible things that maybe I would put it at the beginning. So to have a hook. Um, so that's kind of what I thought. Where can you get the latest, hottest, and coolest word on what's new? Get online at New Line's eBuzz and sign up for your exclusive eBuzz now. Your direct line to New Line. So I thought that was a short commercial. I get what they were trying to do, um, you know, with you know promoting it as a website, uh, and of course you know, use what, what you use to click things on websites, mouses. I thought the, but I thought the con same constant mouse click uh, sound effect was a little repetitive and the music was kind of uninspiring and that just made the commercial dull. <laughs> uh, do you yeah. agree? Yeah. I don't know what they're trying to sell. I don't know what they're trying to, um, you know, what kind of messages that they want us to understand. I feel like some sometimes if you don't have like the behind the scene clear cut, hey, I want you to buy this or I want you to like this or I want you to um, subscribe this or something like, you know, if you don't st um, state call to action, like, um, CTI, the people would often get confused. And especially if you have like 10 seconds or 15 seconds, I, I thought that they weren't like crystal clear of what they want the audience to do. And it was yeah. like really, um, how to say, stagnant. It's not like interesting. It doesn't like, it didn't like keep me um, interest, like, you know, kind of uh, engaged much because of, they use a black background and then just, you know, putting the letters and then logos and then like the voiceover. I think it would be more interesting if they have a little bit more colors or something pop up or some changes from, you know, the throughout background, which was like a black and a blue and then like a white. And then so it was just like 
okay, what's going to happen next? But it didn't like change to anything else, but the voiceover did. So it was kind of like, hmm. Yeah, well, now there's another ad after this. And I think it's actually the very last ad before the picture begins. Let's hope the next one is better. DVD. See it. Buy it. Own it. Watch it once. Watch it twice. Spend hours watching extras beyond the movie and enter the world of stars and directors and the magic they make. Build a collection for the family. With over 9,000 movies to own, it's the most convenient way to watch a movie. DVD. So, the very last uh, commercially sold VHS has, as its last commercial, a commercial just for DVDs. That is... God, I don't know. It's like kicking the dog while it's down, you know? Um, but, and it's very, very ironic. Here's what's putting you out of business. <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, I think that is sort of a more exciting ad. Though I've noticed there's a lot of fast paced like at trailers and ads in this whole collection uh, that's really trying to make everything look exciting. I, and, um, you know, this commercial, which even isn't even a trailer for a specific movie, is sort of doing the same thing. It's like trying to make DVDs look so awesome and, and exciting and cool. And, of course, because it's a Warner trailer, we got to have the most iconic Warner properties. We got Wizard of Oz. We got Batman. We got Scooby Doo. It's it's so it, it also kind of adds to that sort of um how do I say this let like a uh, bragging feeling that this commercial has like ha ha. You don't need. We don't even. You don't even need to use VHSs to watch those popular franchises. We got them. Um, so it is so such a interesting way to have it be. Have that be like <laughs> the last commercial on a commercially released VHS. However, what are your thoughts? Well, it's definitely interesting because I've lived through different um, mediums, you know, obviously starting from cassette tape. Now, now my kids never ever seen cassette tape, like to listen to the music and, you know, to the VHS and to the DVD, there's an MD, like little ones and then floppy disks and all this like technology has changed and now nobody really sees what, you know, even DVDs are. Um, the computer used to have the DVD disc inserted, but now I had to get external one if I were to watch some DVD because everything is online and like streaming. So it's kind of very interesting. Hey, VHS is bye bye, and then you know going to DVD. And then I like this ad better than the the first one that we watched. That was. As I mentioned, it was just like black and then white. And then this one, they put a lot of effort in B-rolls and then actions and, you know, highlighting different um, aspects of why you should have a collection of the DVD. And so it's it's kind of interesting. And um, obviously, there's always, con like, the, the technology is always constantly changing. And then who knows when my kids are older, what would they have nowadays we depend on iphone like what would they have when they were older and then you know who's going to be the next mark zuckerberg like you know maybe they're born today so you never know what the technology is but it's it's kind of interesting for um them to say hey there's thing called dvd let's get them and then um 
because VHA, VHS could have these kind of collections and the movies, and then um, obviously they are like huge and like the physically it's big uh, tape, and you know it, it's very interesting to see uh, the era. But I, I thought it was pretty good in a way. Um, the fast faster pace and then more visual hooks um, that I I both don't drop maybe than the last commercial that we saw trailer. Yeah. So anyway, that was the VHS opening for a history of violence. And now it's time to rate it as either stay through the previews or skip to the feature. Now, to prepare for this, I actually watched A History of Violence, and it got great reviews, but it didn't really grab me. Um, honestly, thought the... I mean, I, I like some of Cronenberg's other movies, but mm, I thought the dialogue was corny. The conflict was a bit too drawn out. Characters and motivations could have been fleshed out a bit better. It wasn't really, I, I couldn't really get into the movie. Um, that being said, it is more of a slow paced uh, drama. Um, so I did find it kind of interesting that a lot of trailers are for action movies when it's not really an action movie at all. It has a few action scenes, but that's not really the same thing. But because I couldn't really get into the movie, I guess I'll say stay through the previews. But what would you rate it, Jury? I actually really enjoy watching the trailers. Um, it kind of tells you, like, it, it's kind of deciding factor like when you go especially say online like you know streaming like you know there are a bunch of you know movies and trailers so before i even watch the mu movie like straight i think i always watch trailers and then if it looks like oh my gosh i don't know if i want to spend next two hours on this then maybe i wouldn't watch so i think it's just like for me watching the trailer is important All right so for this one's uh, stay through the previews. Okay. Well, anyway, that was VHS Sarah. Thanks again, Jury, for coming on. Thank you so much for having me, Kevin. You're welcome. So, Jury, um, where can people find you? Sure. Uh, my Facebook is Jury, J U R I, love, L O V E. It's open to the public. Uh, there's no private setting. And then so as my Instagram, the handle is at Juri, J-U-R-I, Panda. But if you Google my name, Juri, J-U-R-I, love, you'll find a bunch of stuff. So dig in and um, message me anytime on Facebook or Instagram. All right. Well, thanks again, Juri, for coming on to the show. And that was VHS Sarah. And next time, we got some Christmas movies out, uh, to look at. That's right. It's, it's that time again. See you later, everybody.